It began, as always, with the desire for power. The need to conquer. The hunger to consume. Inevitably, this led to conflict. Humanity fought an endless battle against itself. Until it was forced to unite against a power far greater than it had ever known. But even united, humanity left only destruction in its wake. Despite their best efforts at survival, the humans of Sierra continued to march blindly to their imminent doom. Unaware that their misguided attempts at retaliation were only leading them ever closer to extinction. They had thought us crippled by their weapons of mass destruction. But to survive is to endure and prosper. And we have most certainly survived. Jacinto now stands as the last bastion of humanity. A final, desperate defense in the face of impossible odds. In a way, I pity them. But humanity, as always, brought this war upon itself. Hey guys, what is up? Gold Glove here, and welcome to our Gears of War 2 Let's Play. I've got a partner in crime. Say hello, sir. Hello. I was going to say sir, but then I decided against it. I figured that joke got old. Uh, my <laughs> name's Loading God Mode, and uh, this, yeah, this is Gears of War 2. We just completed Gears of War 1. Yes, we did. And it was, it, was a good, it was a good journey, and so here we are for our Gears of War 2 walkthrough. I know you. I know a lot of you guys are very excited for Gears of War 3. It's going to be dropping in September of this year, so we wanted to uh, we wanted to do walkthroughs of all the Gears of War games, uh, kind of like a Let's Play series to kind of recap what you guys may have missed, or if you guys have never even followed the Gears of War um, storyline, then you guys can kind of follow us and enjoy uh, enjoy it. With us. Yeah, it's a bit, it's, Gears of War. It always had a good a good single player. In this case, multiplayer or campaign campaign, campaign I should say. Yeah. Um, I I prefer the Gears of War two campaign over the Gears of War one. Um, but definitely we always always choose Gears of War one multiplayer over this. And look at this retard. Can't even carry a gun. Should we skip training? Um. Yeah, we don't need training. We're, we're no, veterans. Veteran gears. Veteran gear players. We're good tell to that, go. Tell that guy to just just suck it up. Yep. Suck it up and go. So, I mean, honestly, I don't see any graphic differences like too much in this game. Do you, I mean, do you see really any graphic differences when it comes to the character models and such? Everything seems a lot clearer. Like things in Gears of War One were a lot more choppy, a lot grittier. Yeah, that's this true. Is, it's a lot smoother in Gears of War Two. It seems like the big difference between Gears of War One and Gears of War Two is the uh, the mass amount of um, character models at one time. There's just so much more going on in this game in the background. There's always so many more characters involved, which is I mean you'll see it's just full on it's large scale so. I just unlocked the gamer you picture. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yeah, that's have epic. You, have you never played co-op? I did. Not as Dom, though, I don't think. Oh. So, with Gears of War 2, we've decided to scrap the whole... We did kind of a dual screen there for a while when it came to uh, when it came to Gears of War 1. And we decided to scrap it for you guys. So, you, you guys are just watching everything from my point of view. And uh, yeah, that way, yeah, it's just a lot easier it's... for you guys. I mean, the the only like situations that was more beneficial was when we had to split up, which happens. Does it happen a few times in this in, in this game? I can't uh, yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. But in Gears of War One, it happened like three or four times that we had to split up, and so it was kind of cool to see both angles from it. But it's not you're not missing out on much, and a lot of you guys just didn't like it, and you kept telling us to put 50/50 screen, which is <laughs> impossible. I mean, I, maybe you just you guys just don't know, which is yeah. understandable, but. 
You can't you can't do that, or else you'll have to stretch the screens to where. Yeah, it doesn't work. Where you you we can't put 1280 by 720, uh, top and bottom in a 1280 and buy a 1280 and 720 you know uh, frame. Like you, it's impossible to do that. You'd have to stretch it, and it would just look horrible. So. Or eBay. Yeah. So we just met up with Ty, who is another cog. He's oh, what the hell just happened? He is a he is a cog badass. We uh, Ty is an awesome character in this game. And another thing is about Gears of War 2, the character development, the characters are a lot more dynamic. They're not as static as they were in Gears of War 1. They're, they're always changing. There's, there's more of a storyline when it comes to the characters and kind of uh, how they change along with uh, the events of the story, which is, which is always cool. It always adds a whole other dimension to the game, you know? Yeah. I, yeah, Ooh. it was a lot more in-depth just overall with this game. Yeah, definitely. So they did a great job on the campaign, but for us, uh, for us two who fell in love with Gears of One, Gears of War One multiplayer, um, this just didn't really do it for us. But we can talk about the campaign still a little bit. Oh, that was oh. rude. Yeah. Well, I just blew. I was all waiting. <laughs> I was gonna wait to do that, but yeah, I see you. Uh, took I got it, baby. Took I got lead it. On that one. Don't even worry about it. So this scene is a little bit slow. Um, basically, we are in Jacinto. For those of you who. If we talked over something that was kind of informative, we are in Jacinto. We are in. It looks like a hospital. Oh, here's some ammo. And don't chainsaw me. I'll chainsaw and whoever I please. <laughs> we are. Uh, the locusts are raiding it. We are trying to escape out of Jacinto. So that's kind of where we are at the moment. And don't run in front of me, Dom. That's not how you work, bro. Yeah, these kids are bad. Just scraping them. So you'll see that the. Oh, I'm gonna pick up this hammer burst. You'll see that the movements in this game are a little bit different. The way the characters move, the way the uh, kind of the, you aim. I don't know. It feels a little bit different. The you know the movements and the the gameplay. Did you um? Did you already find all the? Oh my god! Bad idea. Don't rush into. Oh, did you already geez. find all the cog tags? Um, I am not sure. Let's check. Uh, I don't know how to check. I because I know I did, but there's also the collectibles in this game are called cog tags and. Right. Um, we couldn't show you guys in Gears 1 because we had already found them all, and I think the same situation is uh, is going to happen in this game that we both already found all the cocktails. So you guys are don't I don't, get I don't I don't think I've found them all. I think I've found them all up till like the oh there's a guy over here up until like the uh, fifth act or something like further into the game, and then I I don't have a couple. But um, we'll we'll try to find as many as we can. I don't really remember the locations of them in this uh, game. I don't at all either. I know we passed one up already. One was like right uh, right in the beginning. Oh okay. It was in the training actually. Am I, I think. Where am I going? Um, yeah the yeah stairs, there is there is I'm one in the training. Fighting. I remember that. But um, I I had a funny story that I wanted. You had a to funny talk story? About. Yeah, that I wanted to tell you guys. Um, I I. I kind of spoke about it in a dual com I did with uh, Trauma. We were playing with him earlier. They probably don't know who he is. Al Caponage. Uh, Al Caponage, Optic Trauma. But yep. um, I, I did a dual commentary with him where I told him the story. Um, and it's it's gaming related. One day uh, during the week between Christmas and New Year's, I had that whole week off of work. And so... Um, uh, my my mother and my girlfriend who live with me both had work so I basically had the whole day to myself every day and I would get on Xbox and the language on Xbox is not very um, not very appropriate. nice appropriate it's not um, <laughs> it's it's extremely Bias. offensive and most of you guys know that it can get super gay at times and I'm okay with that I can I can I can get pretty gay. <laughs> and um, so one day, this kid, and I don't understand why, like, oh, you're such a faggot is, a, is an insult, because, like, I'm not, I'm not gay, and there's nothing wrong with being gay, even if I was. So when people call me a faggot, I just get, I get super gay on them. And so I start screaming, literally screaming about how I have dildos placed all over my house and that I have to sit on them um, um, on all my seats and that me and Clay can have gay orgies all the time and just going off on kids and I'm like literally screaming all this stuff at the top of my lungs and 
Then I get a call from my mother. Where and are we? Said, Hang on, where are we? Um, we are sh- backwards. We've already been over here. Did we, oh my fucking god, I did this before. I, I, the first time I ever played through this, I, I backpedaled. Okay, Back continue. Track. Your story, your, so you, you called your mom, or your no, mom called you? No, my mom called me, like, in, in the midst of yelling at these kids. Not kids, most of them were grown people, which is also quite, in a, like, <laughs> disturbing in itself. But, I get a call and she's like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, I'm playing Xbox, what do you need? You're ruining my KD. And, <laughs> she's like, what are you saying on that game? And I was like, nothing, why? And she's like, because I just got a call from Joe. And Joe's our landlord. And oh. our neighbor happens to be his daughter, who is also a school teacher. So, so pretty much the worst people you could ever let over here, you know, hear you say that stuff. So, yeah, so basically she <laughs> heard me in great detail. Now let me let me get a cool execution on this guy. Oh my bad. Oh, that didn't. Oh my oh, what god, hell, what is that? I forgot How do you kill that. these? You shoot them in the face. Oh my so, god, that was frightening. So my mom calls me and I'm like, well, it's my house. I should be able to say whatever I want in my house. I should be able to get as gay as I want. I didn't say it like that to my mom. But that's pretty much what I was trying to get at. Like, I should be, if I want to be gay in my house, I should be able to be super gay. Right. And obviously she was really embarrassed. And it was kind of embarrassing. So I ended up going over there to apologize as I um, left the house to go pick up Mariah from work. And she was like, yeah, I, I really didn't want to be one of those neighbors who call all the time. But I was just appalled at some of the things you were saying. Like, I'm trying to fill out thank you cards from for all my students. <laughs> and I have to hear about you doing doing just awful stuff with Clay Aiken. And I'm like, oh my god! Oh, that's like, awkward. Because my mom had told me she heard everything, but like, I, like there's there's walls. You kind of like, you kind of hoped walls. you were like, oh maybe she you know maybe she didn't hear this. Maybe part. yeah, maybe it's just loud noises. Maybe she didn't hear, but she heard me word for word. And she's Ooh. upstairs. Like I, my my man cave uh, in my setup video, you know, it's all in the basement. And yeah. And she was upstairs in her kitchen. <laughs> writing these thank you notes and she heard me yelling all the way in her kitchen about me just ramming dildos up Clay Aiken's butt and all sorts of other inappropriate just offensive really offensive stuff that's so horrible that's awesome though yeah oh, it's, God. it's cool now cuz it's a it's a story right right like have you ever gotten pulled over yeah yeah of course. And, and, yeah, and so has it ever been a cool story where you could be like, yeah, I was going like 50 into 25 and I tried to dodge <laughs> the cops? You ever have one of those? Uh, no, because I don't do that. <laughs> well, me neither. And, um. What the fuck is that? This giant ship coming down on top of my head. It's fine. We're fine. That guy's not, though. He's fucking. His ass was lit on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbass. Who does that? Who fucking lights themselves on fire and drives a ship through a building? I don't think he had a choice. I think he's he a crashed. Fucking idiot. I think he was shot down. Probably not. He's probably just an idiot. I don't even and know where to go right now. Uh, up, I'm upstairs. Hold the left bumper. Oh, but what I was getting at about the story, uh, or about having cool stories, is like my first time getting pulled over. I was actually on my way to pick up Mariah, my current girlfriend, um, with like. Oops. It was like the first time meeting her, and I was going to pick her up, and I was ended up being super late to pick her up, uh, because I got stopped by the cops. <laughs> and it's a super not even cool story. And like, if you if anything like that happens, and you're going to meet a girl that you really like, you're hoping you can be like, yeah, I beat up like 15 guys, and, and then I, I got stabbed, but I, I stitched myself up. We're good. We can go on our date. But I don't no, think <laughs> it was an illegal left turn. I got pulled over for, so I had to be a little Jack, bitch. Open this be door. like, yeah, I'm an sorry, illegal I'm... left turn. Yeah. Well, what there's the hell some, did you do? Oh, it, well, in Michigan, there's there's sometimes um, like plazas or parking lots or stuff that you can't make left turns out of. Right. And it'll say no left turn on there, and I just but you did it anyway. I well, I didn't see the sign. I wasn't too familiar with the area at the time. Because she lived like uh, maybe about a half or 45 minutes in the opposite direction of what I normally go. 
Uh-huh. So I was kind of unfamiliar with the territory, and I just I knew that's how I would get to her house. I didn't know, like I didn't see the sign, and so um. You're just Superman, that guy. I always Superman everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, when I when I finally got to her house, I was like, yeah. I got pulled over by the cops, and then of course she had to ask what the hell for, and it was something stupid. You didn't even get a you didn't even get a badass reason. Yeah, I've like, uh, I've been pulled over twice, I think. No, I've been pulled over three times. One, the very first time was about a week after I got my car, my first car, and uh, it was because I my car was kind of low in the front, so and my bumper was low, so I couldn't mount a license. Like it had no spot for a license plate, right? So I was just like, all right, I'll just put my license plate in my uh, in my window, in my windshield. Yeah. And uh, so I did that for a while, and I got pulled over like the third day of school. I was just driving home. And um, so they, you know, she just said, you need to get that fixed. I didn't get a ticket or anything. So I did. I mounted on the front of my car. And then the next time I was leaving school, this is probably like two weeks later. Um, I was leaving school, and I got pulled over. I was going 40 in like a 25. Yeah. That is, I was like, oh my god, I'm so fucked, and uh, I didn't even, didn't even give me a ticket. He just said to go home. So I was like, all right, sweet. So I, third time, I'm going oh fifth. I'm going 55 in a 40, and kids don't speed. Drive, drive safe. Don't be. Yeah, dumb. it's not cool to get tickets and stuff like that. We're telling really these not. stories so that you guys can learn from our mistakes and not be idiots. Exactly. So uh, third time, I'm going 55 in a 40. And I like, I stop at a, <laughs> it's funny because I stop at a red light and like my friend's car is next to me. We just, me and my girlfriend just came from a movie, like a double date with some of our friends. And um, so like just messing around, you know, I pull up next to the guy at the light and I just like start revving my engine just to, you know, just to be a total tool, just to fuck around. <laughs> and, um, and so I just, I just floor it, you know, I was like, all right, he won't race me, but I'll just, whatever, I'll be a jackass anyway. And uh, so I just start going. And I'm, I'm, I hit like 55, you know, the speed limit's 40 on here. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I get uh, this, you know, sirens, lights turn on behind me. I'm like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. And apparently, the car the car that was behind me was a cop. And uh, I didn't you realize idiot. that. It was, it was nighttime, <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, so, uh, but I got out of a ticket again. And this is only a month after I got pulled over the, the second time. I got out of the ticket again, and I think it was because I, my girlfriend was in the car with me, and she looked like she was going to cry. So, uh, I think, and she's pretty, so, you know, that just that just always works out in my favor. <laughs> yeah, I think I've been pulled over a total four or five times, and I've been wrote, written, um, I think, three tickets. But it's, like, it's super weird, because me and cops have, like, super good relationships for whatever reason, like, whenever they pull me over. I can always just like joke with them and stuff like that, and they still end up writing me tickets. But it's just at least it like it eases the tension, you yeah, know. Yeah, definitely. And like <laughs> this one time, I get pulled over, and it's the meanest guy ever. Like this guy was just having a rough week or something, because he was just a dick, and he was the only cop that ever let me go. He really? was, yeah, because I and like. Out of all the times I've been pulled over, it was probably the, the one time I deserved it because I was going like maybe 70, 80 miles an hour in a 55. Oh my and god. I was just, it, it's like a two lane highway on my way home from work. And it, it's not really a highway, it's just a road and it's only two lanes, but like there's a lot of tractors and semi trucks and stuff going back and forth. And so, like, you're allowed to pass. Well, right. I was passing them at like 80 miles an hour and. Clearly, it's it's super dangerous, and I, I wouldn't I wouldn't even dare do that ever again because I learned my lesson from being pulled over that one time. But I was just cutting cars off. I was I was being a little punk ass teenager, like a typical punk ass teenager. Yeah. And so um, so he pulled me over, and he's like, "Where where are you uh where are you driving to so fast?" Blah blah blah. And I was like. Um, I, I need to get to school. I'm running late. And he's like, what school do you go to? And I was like, oh, just, well, oh, I, whatever. Some community college. Yeah, no one knows. Right. But, um, he's like, well, I've been getting complaints. I guess people were calling on me. Like, calling <laughs> the cops. Like, calling 911. Because I was yeah. driving that poorly. Well, you should, uh, drive more s- safely. Well, it was just funny, though. Because, like, he gets all these complaints. And then, 
Like he's being a super dickhead to me, and he's like, he's like, you know, if you get into a car wreck, you're never getting to school. And I was like, that's you know. true, man. He's got a good point. I was like, I know, I, I'm so sorry. And he's like, get the, he's like, get to class. And then was, you drove 90, right? <laughs> no, I fucking, I drove the speed limit was 45. I was driving. Uh, um, you're probably driving underneath the speed limit. Yeah, I was driving he was probably like right 40. behind you. I was driving 40, and we totally <laughs> fucked up this cutscene with our um, with our car stories. That's all right. Yeah, I, don't, I think we our should, car stories are enjoyable. Yeah, we should end it now, though. So yeah, definitely. That is the end of episode one. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you guys next time. Peace, guys. Humans are no strangers to war. After all, we've been fighting for as long as we can remember. War is all we know. In the past, we fought for emulsion. We fought for country. We fought for freedom. But all that changed after E-Day. For 15 years, we've been fighting for our very survival against inhuman, genocidal monsters. But it is a fight. We cannot continue. Humanity faces extinction. Unless we end this war now. So why land down, Sergeant? Why not just drill down here? Jacinto's the one place it can't dig through, and land down's a perfect spot to hit him on their own turf. Heard there's a shitload of grubs there, Sergeant. More like ten shitloads. We had hoped the light mass bombing would decimate the Locust Horde. But they survived. And have returned stronger than ever. They've brought with them a force that can sink entire cities. Even Jacinto, our last beacon of hope through all these dark days, is now at risk. Soon we'll have nothing left to defend. And that means we have only one option. Attack. What I ask of you now is not an easy thing, but it is necessary. If we are to survive, if we are to live long enough to see the seasons pass, our children grow and experience a time of peace that we have never known, we must now take this fight to the Locust. We will go to where they live, and where they breed, and we will destroy them! This is the day we take the battle to the heart of the enemy. This is the day that we correct the course of human history! This is the day we ensure our survival as a species! of the cog, my fellow gears, go forth and bring back the hope of humanity! Oh, welcome to the big sock, Sergeant Phoenix. You ready to hit the road? You know it. Well, let's go chunk some bullets in them grubs.